It's day 1447 of doing a video every day on the farm, so that is nearly four years coming up soon this month. Anyway, massive thanks before I go any further about the video. This quad track behind me is second hand. I bought it this week and I wouldn't have done it without people watching the YouTube channel. Anyway, we're going to do some little bits of jobs on it now and have a play with it later. And I think friends coming over later that you might recognise as well. So, yeah, we'll get going. Anyway, just to show you the scale, James is with me this morning. So, I'm um, strapping in the cab, keep him out of harm's way while I blow the radiator out. Otherwise, he would end up covered completely in dust. Rather than take it to the workshop, the airline on the combine is pretty amazing and it's got a nice long pole on it. So I'm just going to use the combine airline to blow the radiator out on this. Just sunk in four years, nearly four years doing a video every day, what we're doing. Unbelievable. First job, open the bonnet. Now, David Jones showed me this trick. That linchpin, and you fold it out flat, which is really difficult with one hand without hurting yourself fits into that hole there and releases the bonnet so you can lift it up there we go things get ready for some gas struts anyway these look like the aircon radiators they look fine just took this clip out of here this one out of this side. Jesus, they're really good bloody pins then. That's it. Now, that should pull down forwards. If that goes up a bit higher. And then, as you can see, it's pretty clogged. It's only really working across the top there. Now, in the cold UK, that's probably fine, but if you were using this in Australia, or America in some of the heat, you'd struggle to cool the engine with a radiator that blocked. But you probably they're probably not even noticing Britain. And the last season that we've had where one minute it's blue skies like this, the next minute it's chucking it down. That's how they clog up a bit quicker as well, because you've got dust and moisture, which doesn't help. Like if it was just dry, it'd probably go through the radiator, but instead it's stuck to it. So we'll get the airline off the back of this and blow it out. Yeah, so this has its own airline stashed up there. Nice long stick so you can keep far away and not get covered in dust. And then some tracks off the reel. It's dead long because it actually reaches the end of the header. When the header's 12 meters, it's quite a fair wet length. Anyway, I'll need two hands to plug it in. I'll plug it in and fire that up so we've got constant airflow. Normally you'd try and blow it all from the back, but you can see it's like a little furry jacket and cause it obviously happened when it's been damp and wet, but it dried, it started to peel off. So by just sort of giving it a slight angle, it all fell off and then it got in the back then, blasted the rest out. So that's a lot better now. Quad track cold start. So you get like a little funny noise as it pulls the oil up out the bottom of its uh, gearboxy thing. Here we go. No wonder it was a good deal and cheap. Fuel, ta fuel tank's empty on it. Wow, wow, you still sat up there. Things I've learnt, if you're gonna fill a quad track up with diesel, if you leave it with straight on, this bottom step then corresponds with that step. But if you leave it on a lock, it doesn't. But I left it on a lock, because I thought it might be a little bit easier to get James in the cab. So he's been sat watching me fill up the diesel, because he likes it. Anyway, I've filled it up to about here, because I didn't want to completely empty that. I believe it holds 1,400 litres, but I'm not sure. Actually, I can put more in, because that there's 3,000 left in that anyway. I thought it was getting low, but it's not. Just on my way into Liverpool to pick somebody up. Satellites at the moment. Um, some of you might know him, you may have seen him on um, the TV box, 
that he's doing a gig in Liverpool tonight, so he's going to come and play tractors. See the locals are out again. Ripping up the wheat that's already wrecked with the winter. Don't get that in Chippy Norton, do you? Not in Chippy Norton, no. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Don't you think horses smell? Yeah. They absolutely stink. My mum's got one. Just looking at Bill's grains, he's had a new roller put on it, so. Which should be uh, get it on the back of the quad track, see it slow it down a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big so job on there, is the James? I've only got one. Bit of gravel carting. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, yeah. Talking apples and um, forage. Cold start on the 455. Is that the best sounding tractor you've ever heard? Nursing and semi. Children, watch this. In the red corner, got the uh, quad track. And then we're going to get the 936 and I'm just going to get a 56 ton tow strap, which is here. And we'll see which pulls the best. It's going to be pretty obvious, like. Martin's here. Well, it must be Tony Hall's birthday, isn't it? It must be, I reckon it's close to it, if it's not today. <laughs> Martin said, make sure it's in two wheel drive, make it fur. <laughs> well, but you can't even. Well, it li won't have it, I presume it's just permanent, it's isn't it? Yeah. Well, what's that? I don't know. It's gonna, it's gonna piss it, isn't it, really? We should put the 724 on the front of the 936 as well. Even it up a bit. I wonder what that does. Oh, it did something there, slip. No? Yeah, well, I don't know. Let's try and see what happens. Yeah, that strap, it's um, one of them cramp ones. 56 ton braking force. <laughs> nice thing about it is it's so light as well. I've positioned myself here because I'm expecting them to go that way. So, John's on the 936. Martin's giving me a brief of which is a four wheel drive select button. We've got the toe strap, make it safe. Caleb's smiling on, his, on the quad track. I think we should put the 724 definitely on the... Oh, 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 oh! Oh, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> we might have to put it on a drawbar, let's have a look. Yeah, because of the way the hitch went on, that could fit out through the hole. So, we'll put it on a drawbar. Put that in there now. Right, take two. Right. Oh. Can't get it in gear quick enough. <laughs> Is he got in the right gear now? We're messing around with some of the switches. Maybe we've... Oh, there we go. Yeah, probably not a good idea for the first time you've driven it. Right, now we've worked out which, which gear.
<laughs> yeah, it's not having it, is it? I'll let him have a little bit. They jumped out of gear though, didn't they? Like oh, yeah, you're not, yeah. Yeah, you're supposed to have it engaged before you give it loads of load. They told me that to, oh, so, yeah. so it doesn't damage it. So, if you, so really, we should say someone say stop and go. Well, that's it, and now he won't be able to. Yeah, don't try this at home, kids. It doesn't, it doesn't even feel it, does it? It's like <laughs> zero slip. Because that's 100% slip. It's cleaning the concrete, isn't it? Oh well. Oh wow. Pulls it quick, doesn't it, when it wants to? So we've worked out that. What, what was it doing again? So if you're getting pulled or any sort of like pulling behind you, you put it into drive like this and then let go and they're still pulling, it doesn't like it and then pops out of gear. I think it's probably to protect the gearbox, isn't it? But when it did pull it, when you start first with it, we should have gone one, two, three, and then that yeah, could have gone. But yeah, it doesn't even know the 936 weighing 11 tons is behind it. But I think this is 27 tons. What on the muck spreader? A muck spreader. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Because at the headlands, you could just loop round it easy. <laughs> but you'd have to have a different one because this hasn't got a PTO. Oh well, that was fun. <laughs> that was good fun. It's nice to be back in the tractor. After your tour, so tonight you're going to um, impress how many people tonight? Two thousand people there tonight. Two thousand, I believe so. Jesus, it's good. And then, um, yeah, eleven days left. Oh, no, eleven shows left. Sorry. And are any of them are any tickets left anywhere? Have they all sold out? I think it might be a couple in Liverpool. Um, Bournemouth is a few, but apart from that, it's all sold out. It's good. So if you Google Caleb tour, <laughs> if you Google www.calebliv, all right, Caleb it's out there. But I mean, yeah, I mean, um, the majority of the tickets are pretty much sold, which is, and it's a nice mix in terms of. Like the other day, for example, I was in Leicester. Ninety percent were non-farmers and ten percent were farmers, which is amazing to see that non-farming people are coming out to learn a bit about farming, which is amazing. That's what we want, isn't it? I mean, yeah. That's why we do daft things like this because it makes people watch stuff. No, this on the is the fun of farming. This is what happens when you farm for a living. You get to do fun stuff like this. Play with big toys, yeah. <laughs> Birthday bumper time today with a special guest. So off we go. Nick Goodwin, David Sharp, Darren Ball. Barbara Atkinson, Phil and Amy Smith, 56. No, hey, Phil Amy Smith. Yeah, Phil Amy Smith is 56. John Clark, 57. Gwyndaf Parry, 48. Michelle Campbell, 41. Where did I get to? Sam Dorr. And then BKAT. Yeah, we got Thomas Lub Lum Brown is 12. And then Rab Steph. 60. Rad Happy birthday, all. 60. Good Sean. And I haven't done. Oh, I missed Sean Delalio. Is that pronounced? Delalio. Is Delalo. three. Delalio. And also, Tony Hall is old. He's 62. Six. Happy birthday, everybody. Yeah, happy birthday, everyone. And look at that. £61,198 for that. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks, Caleb. Pleasure. We're going to go and see Thanks him in a bit. That's why Martha's here. Yeah, we're all going to see Caleb tonight in Liverpool. Groupies. Yeah, Woo. we've come to hear what he's going to do before he does it. It's going to be, <laughs> going to be quite cool. <laughs> I've just dropped Caleb back off to watch the football match. Big United Sports, Caleb, if you didn't know. And uh, John and Martin have looped it round in the yard here. That's how manoeuvrable it is. Yeah, so anyway, we're I'm going to get changed now. I've sort of half changed. Uh, and then we're going to go for something to eat and then watch his show when he's finished watching his football match. Anyway, massive thanks to him today for doing the birthday bumper. Um, obviously, he does stuff with Amazon and, and the new series is out soon. So, you know, he has to watch what he's, uh, what he's seen in, I suppose. But apparently he's okay if he's on YouTube, so that's good. So, yeah, thanks to him for, for coming for a look round. So, he had the full tour. We even looked at Brook House and Wellbrook as well while he was here. So... Anyway, that's probably all for today's video. It's probably too long already. So don't forget, there's another one tomorrow. So I'll see you later. Quick edit before a shootout. Don't forget the Real Country file is out this week. So there's a, there's a, what it looks like. It's There's a link below this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.